Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you a brand new way of interacting with your code base in C Sharp that was just added in .NET 8 that completely changes the game and I'm gonna be honest, it is insane that Microsoft even added this and made it public for us to use because I can totally see this going very wrong if people abuse it. There's too much power being given here and I think you should know about it so you can know how you can deal with it in your pull requests in case somebody tries to use it. Now I think this is an excellent feature and it really streamlines a lot of the pain points you might have with trying to access things you probably shouldn't have access to. However, there are some caveats and I'm going to present all that in this video. Not only that, but the performance gains of a feature like this are insane. If you like that content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe. And for more training, check out my courses on domtrain.com. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on Domtrain called From Zero to Hero Docker for Developers. Docker is still the most used tool in the developer ecosystem and is a must know for everybody. This course is very up to date. It teaches you everything you need to know about Docker from the very basics, how to install it and how to get started with it to some pretty advanced stuff in terms of security and tips and tricks. And it is authored by Dan Clark, a new author on Dome Train. He has been working with Docker for years and he's seen the good, the bad and the ugly. And in this course, he's going to teach you everything you need to know to use it the right way with the best practices and use it as one of the most valuable tools in your toolbox. Even if you do know how to work with Docker in a basic level, this course will teach you literally everything you need to know as a developer and it's made with developers in mind. Now to celebrate the launch, I'd like to offer the first 400 of you a 15% discount code on your purchase. So click the link in the description and use the discount code you see right now on your screen to claim your discount. Now back to the video. All right, so let me show you what I have here. I have a simple .NET 8 console application. We're gonna start very, very simple. Let's say I have an example class over here and that class has, let's say a private string method that returns some text. So I can say return Nick over here. Now this is a private method, but for some reason I might want to be able to call that method. Now, if something is private, you can argue that it shouldn't be called, but we've been in situations throughout our lives where you might have to access something that is inaccessible. I totally understand and I stand behind the fact that you should not be doing something like this. If something is private, it is outside of the public API and you only have to access it or deal with it through its public members. Because if it is inaccessible, you're not supposed to be using it. We can agree that this is the case. However, we've all been in situations where we might have to do that for better or for worse. That is the experience that Microsoft is trying to improve and actually greatly improved in .NET 8. So for the purpose of this video, let's just ignore the fact that you probably shouldn't be doing this and just focus on how we can do it way, way better now in .NET 8. And Microsoft would not add a feature like this if there wasn't a very solid use case for it. So let's just focus on the feature itself. Now, if I want to call this method, obviously I can't just go ahead and say method because, well, that is impossible. So what can I do? Well, traditionally you'd use reflection. So you would say type of example over here. And then since you have the type, you would say get method, you would use the method name. So method. Now, since this is an instance and a non-public uh, method, you would say binding flags instance and also non-public and to invoke it to invoke that method you would say invoke and you would pass the instance of the example class and you would also say that this is an empty object array because we have no parameters to pass down and you might even use something like an array dot empty over here to not allocate an empty array every single time so something like this and if you are to do this then you would get the name which would be Nick. Let's take a look at that. So console.writeline name. If I go ahead and I run this, then as you can see in the console, we get the name. The name is Nick. And in fact, let's just quickly debug it to see every step of this. So we get the example class. It's here. And then we get all that over here to get the name. And as you can see, the name is Nick and we can print it. Now, it doesn't take a genius to understand that having to write something like this every single time is very, very tedious. And this is the same case with things like fields. So if you have a private string, which is a field over here, and that is also Nick or something else, then to access that, you have to say dot get field. If it is a property, you have to say get property, constructor, and so on. Now that is a very, very tedious thing to do every single time and maintaining this code is a pain in where you don't want to be painful. So what was adding .NET 8? Well, let me show you. I'm going to create a public class over here. I'm going to call that caller and I'm going to add 
a public static extern. You probably haven't seen this keyword before, but you wanna have an extern here, string, and I'm gonna call that get method. And I'm going to use the example as a parameter. So that is my method now. And what I'm going to do, because yes, I have the method now, but if I go ahead and I say, for example, var name equals, and I comment all of this because I don't need it anymore. So let's go ahead and do that. And I say name is caller dot get method example, then I'm not really going to get anything. Let me just quickly show you. I'm going to stick a breakpoint here and run this. Step over this, nothing actually happens. So how can I get this to call that method? Well, all I have to say is use the brand new attribute unsafe accessor. Now the unsafe part in this case is that you're accessing a private member that you shouldn't be using. So that basically just brings your attention to the fact that you're doing something that you have to be extra careful with. But once we have that, we can go here and we can use the first enum, which is unsafe access, what type of thing? A constructor, a field, a method, a static field, or a static method. We want a method in this case because that is an instance method. And then we want to specify the name of the method, which in this case is just method. But you would use whatever is the name of this. And once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and run this. And as you can see now, I can get the name using this in a compile time fashion in a very, very easy to write way and easy to maintain. This is it. And you know, if you could actually access that method or remember, you could say name of and get the method and so on. In this case, we can't. But this is a fantastic step up from what we had before. And this does not stop there. For example, if you wanted to access a field, you would do the same thing. You could say the extra kind now is a field and the name in this case is the name of the field. So field and I can say get field. So if I do that, let's just stop this over here and say get field. And the last thing I need to do before I run it is because this is a field, I also need a ref keyword here because I want a reference to that field. So once I have that and I have the breakpoint, I'm going to go ahead and run this. And if I do that, I should be able to get the name as you can see. Not only can I get the name, but also I can say color get field. And because this is a ref, I can say John. So if I want to set the value of that field, because this is a ref, I can go ahead and do that. And you can see how this can get into the danger zone because this all looks very safe for something that starts with the word unsafe, but I can get the name like this. So I have Nick and then I can set the name if I want. And that just absolutely works. So if I go to example and I see the name, the name is now John because I'm using that ref keyword. It is way too powerful. I can't believe this was added, but now we can do this with things like fields, method constructors, even with properties, even though there is no uh, property a parameter here in the enum, a property is just a getter and a setter method. So if I had, let's say, prop string uh, property over here, and I said that this is actually uh, private, and I set the default value again to Nick, then if I wanted to call it, the way this is compiled behind the scenes is that we get um, a set and then the name of the property method to set the value and a get and then the property name uh, over here to get the value. So I could get this and I can say that this is just another method. Give me the property by saying get property here. So get property. And if I do that and I go ahead and I say get me the property, then as you're going to see, we're going to get that value from the property, no problem at all. The value is Nick. Now you're probably thinking one of two things. Wow, this is insane. I'm going to start using it and replace my reflection calls with it, which good. That's basically what you should be doing. But also you might be wondering, other than the fact that Jesus Christ, this makes reflection like behavior way more accessible. We're going to have to deal with a lot of stupid things in our code base. But also the other thing is, how does this compare performance wise? Because this looks like it's going to be way more performant than having to do this every single time and getting the type and getting the method and invoking with reflection. So how does performance stack up with this? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to add a few benchmarks over here just to show you how it works. So let me talk you through the benchmarks. First, we get a read-only reference to that example class so we can reuse it in all the benchmarks. First, I'm calculating everything about the type in here and then I'm getting the method and I'm invoking it. Now, this is an inefficient way to do reflection because you have to calculate this method info every single time. So what I'm doing in the next benchmark is I'm actually caching it 
over here as a static read-only field and then I'm invoking it, which will give it a better chance to perform really, really well. Then I'm calling the unsafe approach with the unsafe accessor attribute, the thing we just saw. And then I added an extra public method to show you how it compares to the direct call to a public member of the class. So what I'm going to do is just go back here and say return early and then benchmark runner dot run my benchmarks. And let's see how all of these now stack up. Let's make sure that this is in release mode and run it. So let's take a look at what the results are. All right, the results are back. Let's see what we have here. So as you can see, traditional reflection, 24 nanoseconds, very, very slow. The cast version, six nanoseconds, much faster than the non-cast version. However, the unsafe and the direct, basically the same. So this new unsafe actor approach gives you compile time performance without having to use reflection at all. The performance here is completely bonkers. Now, does this mean you should go ahead and use this everywhere in your code base? Probably. However, you should be a bit careful of a few things. For example, this will allow you to do things you can't do with traditional reflection. And in fact, you can't do with traditional code either. Here's an example. Let's say I have a static read only field over here. So I'm going to say static read only SR field. Now, obviously, you can't change the value of this field in runtime. In fact, the JIT will treat it in a way as a constant. So this is just perceived as something set in stone and that's not going to change. However, and this is where this gets a bit tricky, you could, if you wanted to, say something like this get static field and change this to a static field and give it the name static read only field over here. And if you do that, then nothing stops you from going over here and saying var field equals get static field from the caller and getting its value, but also being able to say, hey, how about I just set this value, which is not supposed to be changed ever. And as you can probably understand, doing something like this, which by the way, you totally can, so I can get it and I can set it. And if I go in here, you can see the value is now changed to John. This could potentially cause unexpected behavior. So very, very, very careful. This is not something reflection can do. So if you try to do this with reflection, the application will actually blow up. So use this at your own risk and don't try to do something that's just way, way too far out there because there's too much power that this thing is giving you. But I do think that it is a good feature that will simplify a lot of bad code or messy to maintain code in our code bases. But now I want to know from you, what do you think about this? And is it something you're going to use? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.